Thank you guys all for being here. So, so please rise and greet one another and say grace to you. All right, and please do remain standing for the reading of God's word. The scripture reading for today is from Philippians chapter 4, verses 21 to 23. Please read with me. Greet every saint in Christ Jesus. The brothers who are with me greet you. All the saints greet you, especially those of Caesar's household. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit. This is a word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. All right. In today's passage, um, if you would notice, it's the last section of Philippians series. So we are finally at the very end of the Philippians, and we are now in the final section. And if you have headings in your Bible, the final section is going to say final greetings. So this is the last section. We're finally well done, we are here. And today, if you look at the passage, there's one verb that keeps popping up, and that is to greet. And he says, greet every saint. It's the last command and it's the last suggestion that Paul tells the Philippians what they ought to do is to greet every saint. Now, it's the, it's the only thing in this section that Paul tells them to do. So what does it mean to greet every saint? So does that mean, you know, you, as you pass people in the church and you say hi to people? Is that the command? So the command is, if you enter the church and you see people, you say hi. Is that what the passage is about? If that's the case, then I have nothing more to say. <laughs> So I can just be like, all right, you just say hi, and I can just go down and we'd be done for the day. And so some of the youth kids are like, yes. But, but that's not the case. So we're going to dive into what it really means to greet someone. So how many of you lived at least a like, couple years or significant amount of time in a, what you would consider a big city? Like Seoul, like New York, maybe like Seattle, any, anywhere like that. If, could you raise your hand if you've ever lived longer than a year in those, in those cities? Yeah? Okay. So if you've ever been to those cities and you walked through these cities, there's a couple of things that you would notice immediately. So number one is that there are a lot of people Walking around. So uh, I guess like a, it's like a side story. But one of my friends came down from Seattle to Dallas. And for the first couple of months, he was in depression. Because he's so used to just walking outside. And he, he'd see people walking around. But in Dallas or in Houston, you go outside, you, you'd be lucky if you run into maybe 10 people. Okay, if you walk down a mile, you, sometimes you don't even run into anybody. So he was like, what is, like, do people live here? But when, you, when you're in a big city, you walk down the street, the first thing that you notice is that, oh, there's a lot of people here. And the second thing that you would notice is that no one says hi to you. No one is greeting you. Am I, am I right? So... If you, if, you, if you go down the streets of Seoul, no one's going to stop and say, hello, how are you? If you go down the streets of New York, you're, no one's going to be like, no one's going to even want to meet eyes with you. And they'll just pass by you. 
The only people who want to lock eyes with you are people who want, to, who want you to spend money. Okay, so if, that's why if someone's looking at you in the middle of the street in New York, you're like, or you, you constantly look at your watch and constantly look at your phone. On the other hand, on the other hand, how many of you grew up in what you would consider small town? Raise your hand. Looks like you can see it. Wait, small town? No? Okay. No one is from small town. Okay, if you're from a small town, you go outside, you walk, and you can walk across the entire town in maybe 20 minutes, okay? And you would run into maybe like five people. And every time someone comes across from you, and you can feel them trying to lock eyes with you. They're like looking at you. So if you look up, you'll lock eyes with them. And if you do, and if you don't say hi, now it's awkward, okay? So there are occasions where, um, you know, I don't know if you've have, ever, ever had this experience. Probably if you live in a neighborhood with a, like a trail, if you walk on a trail and you see people walking around, if you lock eyes with them and you don't say hi, it's really awkward, Right? So if you don't want to say hi, if you don't want to greet them, you, again, keep looking at your phone, keep looking at your watch, or look somewhere else, as if you don't notice them. But either way, I think we can all agree in some sense that you greeting friend, like you know, having a nice friendly greeting with each other, saying, hey, how are you? Or you just say hi, it's like, uh, good morning, or whatever it, it may be, is nicer than you just ignoring each other. Is that right? I think we can all agree on that. But why? If you live in a city, there's millions of people around you. So even if you thought it'd be nice to you know, greet someone, how many of those people are you going to greet? you probably run into maybe hundreds, if not thousands of people at a time. But if you live in a small town, again, you'll, you'll probably agree that it's nice to say hi, but what if it's someone that you, you've never met, or what if it's someone that you feel like they, they look weird, or they somehow, like, you know, you, you're... They look like somehow you're, you don't want to associate with them. But either way, whenever you say hi, it has the same effect on everybody. Doesn't matter if you're in the city or if you're in the countryside or if you're in your own home. Saying hi does the same things for everybody. The first thing that it does is that you acknowledge somebody's presence. You acknowledge that you, you're saying, by saying hi, you're saying, I know you're there. I acknowledge that you are there. And number two, the second thing that it does, your greetings is a gateway of building relationships. So you can't have a positive, positive relationship with someone that you don't greet. So... If you were to, you know, build a positive, positive relationship with your community, the first things that you learn to do is to greet people. So I don't know if you've ever been to, you know, other countries outside of the States or, you know, maybe, maybe you've gone to Korea, maybe you've gone to Japan, maybe you've gone to China, or if you go to other cultures... Greetings look a little bit different. So here, greetings is, you know, like simple, short greeting. is like, hi, you go by. If, if you say one more sentence, it's, hi, how are you? And you walk away, okay? In Korea, if you greet someone, the proper greeting is like to your friend, so to someone, to like a relative, like you say, you say, hi, 안녕, right? But this is what, shocked me when I went back to Korea 
in high school. So one of my friends, like she, she was a college student at the time, but we were walking in the middle of Seoul. There's like hundreds of people around us, right? Uh, all of a sudden, this group of students, like they're in uniform, so we, we could tell they're uh, students. They stop in the middle of the street, and all they say, they go, 안녕하세요. I was like, what is going on? It's like, who are you guys? <laughs> and then, apparently, my friend, is, uh, they're from her school, and she is their upper classman. So they stop in the middle of the street and say, 안녕하세요, 선배님. I was like, what? They do that? It was a huge culture shock for me. But as you know, in Korea, you don't greet anybody you don't know. But if you know them, you have to greet like with a proper greeting. Right? But, you know, if you come here from Korea, the greetings here is kind of awkward. So my, one of my first memories coming over from Korea is I was walking... I was walking to school, I think. I was walking to school, and this old lady turned to me and said, Hi, how are you? And she walked away. But if you learned English in Korea, the first thing that you learn is when someone says, Hi, how are you to you? You say, Hi, how are you back? So she said, Hi, how are you? And she walked away, right? I stopped, and I, I turned. I was like, Hi, hi. And then by the time I, I was about to say, how are you? She already walked away. So I was like, oh, uh, what just happened? This happened over and over and over again. Like a whole bunch of times. So at the time, I was like, why are they ignoring me? Like, like eventually I learned that it's just their way of greeting people on the street. So the way you greet is different for everyone. But again, the effect is the same. Like you're acknowledging that someone's there. And eventually, if you want to have a conversation and you want to build a relationship with them, and on top of that, a positive relationship with them, that's how you open up the conversation. You greet them. So greeting is pretty important on, you know, wherever you're from. It doesn't really matter where you live. Greeting is important either way. Now, when you, when you see greetings in the Bible, the Bible actually uses the word greeting a lot. And this word for greeting is the Greek word, uh, sorry, aspazomai. Yeah, I'm not very good with Greek uh, uh, spellings, but it's aspazomai. This same word is used for greeting in the Bible a lot. So whenever you see the word greet or greetings, it's aspazomai. Okay? So aspazomai, he says, aspazomai every saint in Christ Jesus. So who specifically are these every saint? So he's writing this letter to the Philippians, and in the in saying this to the Philippians, he's telling them to don't exclude anyone from your greetings. So if you remember, you know, Philippians, uh, we've, had, we've had sections where he talks about unity and harmony and loving, loving one another, being together in Christ and all, all that. So when Paul tells the Philippians, say, as puzzle my, every saint, he's saying you should not be greet, greeting certain church members or just even certain church members, like you know, church, or even certain churches in the area. It's every saint in Christ Jesus. You greet everyone without exception. And if you think about why he's writing this letter in the first place, the Philippians has some problems. The Philippians had problems with people disagreeing with each other within the church. They had some, you know, people. They had some discourse within the church, and they had, you know, they had people who have. 
I don't want to, I don't want to use the word fighting, but they're against each other. Therefore, causing division within the church. So if you think about what greeting really means to you and to your life, what's the first thing that goes when you have relationships that are broken or relationships that go sideways? Or like you students, if you fight with your friends, what is the first thing that go between you and that person? It's the greetings. If you have beef with someone, you don't greet them. Even if you go to the same church, if you fight with someone, if you had an argu- like an intense argument with someone, the next time you see them, you don't greet them. You're going to look the, look, other, look the other way and go somewhere else. Or you do the same trick again and you pull out your phone and you look at your phone as you walk by. You not greeting someone is a sign of your broken relationship with them. At least it's one of the first signs. Some of the adults have, you know, grown past that point. Even if you have some conflict with someone, you've learned to greet them either way. But your greetings are half-hearted. You're like, oh, the person again. But you just, you just deal with it and put up a smile and you just say hi and you walk away. Greetings is, again, it's the gateway to a positive relationship. But at the same time, it shows you the absence of greeting means the broken relationship between you have with someone. So this call to greet is, he's pointing the Philippians to, as, as a reminder to devote themselves to unity and harmony because if if you picture a church where people don't greet each other that is not a picture that you would think of when you think of a church united church church in harmony the picture that you would have of a church that is united and and harmonious is that you have people within the church that greet one another, that acknowledge one another, that care for one another. So your greetings are not half not half-hearted, but your greetings are sincere. Your prayers for them are sincere. Your relationship with them are sincere. So when Paul tells the Philippians, Greet one another. Aspasumai, every saint in Christ, he's telling them, look, you have to be united and devoted to being a united church and having harmony amongst you. And this also applies to people who don't like you. We call them enemies. You're to greet one another in Christ Jesus. Because saint, the word saint, is a word that Paul uses for every Christian. And the word means holy one. It also means set apart for Christ. Even if you are enemies with each other, if you're, a, if you're a holy one set apart for Christ, if you're a brethren in Christ, you should be greeting one another. To expand the meaning of greetings a little bit here, the, the word ex- expands into receiving with joy. Caring for one another. So you are to care for even your enemies. You are to greet even your enemies. You are to receive even your enemies with joy. Now this, you know, with this teaching, one of Jesus' teaching comes to mind. 
And when it comes to this concept of loving even your enemies, you know, most people will think about Jesus, right? So this is what Jesus says in Matthew chapter 5, verse 46 to 47. For if you, if you love those who love you, what reward do you have? Do not even the tax collectors do the same. If you greet only your brothers, only your brothers, what more are you doing than others? Do not even the Gentiles do the same. And the word that Jesus uses here to greet your brother is aspasomai. Even Gentiles, even people who don't believe in Jesus, even people who don't believe in God, even people who are enemies of God still greet their own brothers, a.k.a. they still greet people that they like. But we are to greet every saint. I hope it's not the case, but you may look around the church and you may find people that you're awkward around. You may find people that you don't really click with. You may find people that you don't really like. But the reason why we ought to greet them is not, be, it's not because they're a great person. It's not because you're a great person. But Jesus is the great one who died for all of us. So, Paul, as Paul tells them to greet every saint, you might be thinking, maybe the Philippians thought the, thought, thought the same thing. You might be thinking, this is pretty hard. Actually, if not impossible, this is a really, really difficult thing to do. It's simple. It's, it, in our English phrase, it's easier said than done. It's really easy to say, greet, every, greet everybody. But in practice, this is actually a really difficult thing to do. It's a daunting task. Because, you know, how am I going to greet or care for or, you know, sincerely, sincerely connect with everyone in the church? From the moment you walk from here to the gym for lunch, like in about 30, 30 minutes or so, it, on your way, you're going to encounter at least 100 people. How am I going to greet and care for all of them? I mean, I guess you can, one of the things that you can do is kind of like mimic all the pastors. So, that, so one of the ways that you know someone's a pastor at our church is that from on your way walking towards the gym, they're constantly doing this. They're most likely they're part of the staff or they're an ordained deacon. Because they know a lot of people. It's like, oh, hello, hello, hello. But how am I going to do that? Or why is this a command? This, I don't want you to think this is a legalistic rule where if you don't do this, if you don't say hi to everybody around you, then you are, you know, Sinning against God. But at the same time, it's because we are a saint. We are the holy ones. We are the set apart ones for Christ that we ought to do this. It's the right thing for us to continue striving for. And Paul understands this is the hard thing to do. So the way that Paul is trying to encourage the Philippians is that he continues to say, this is, what he, this is what he says, my brethren who are with me greet you. And then verse 22 he says, all the saints greet you. 
Have you, ever, have you ever wondered why he says that? There's a couple ways that you can think about this. One, the first one is, if you've ever written a letter to someone as a collective group, you usually mention something like, oh, all of us miss you, or all of us are thinking about you, all of us whatever is doing for, something for you. Like, if, you, if they're a Christian, then you say, all of us are praying for you. You say something like that to include everybody who's writing the letter with you. Well, in other words, like you're writing on their behalf. So you say something like, oh, all of us are thinking about you, or all of us are praying for you. But this is a little bit, in, this is pretty interesting because the first sentence, my brethren who are with you, with me, greet you. You can think of that one as, you know, what I just said. It's just like Paul is collectively saying, we all greet you. But the second part is, all the saints greet you. And the interesting part about Philippians is that he said, he adds, especially those of Caesar's household. What is, who is Caesar's household? So before we get to the Caesar's household part, All the saints greet you. What does that mean? It means that you are not the only one who has the burden. You are not the only one who is called to greet every saint. The person next to you, your brethren, your sister in Christ we are all collectively called to greet one another, to care for one another, to pray for one another, to build positive relationship with one another, to build the community together, to move as body of Christ, to build the kingdom of God together. So he's reminding the Philippians, you are not alone in this. As he closes this letter, remember Paul's in prison most likely not getting out. And the last thing that he says is to remind the Philippians to greet every saint. And at the same time, he's telling them, all the saints greet you. Remember, for unity and harmony within the church, but at the same time, don't forget, you are not the only one who's in this fight. Because all the saints greet you. Now, the Caesar's household, especially the Caesar's household. What does he mean by that? So, for those of for some people who, who may not know what Caesar is, Caesar is the emperor of Rome. Right? So if he says Caesar's household. So our immediate thought is, oh, is like Caesar's brother or Caesar's sister, like, you know, are they greeting us? Or, like, or even like the emperor himself is greeting us? Unfortunately, at this time, the Caesar of Rome, the, the emperor of Rome at this time is Nero. He's the, historically the most hostile emperor to Christianity. So it's definitely not the Caesar himself. Most likely it's not his direct families, like, you know, closest relatives. But when the Bible says household, it includes the entirety of the household, including the servants. So most likely Paul is talking about someone in the Caesar's household, a.k.a. they're part of his servanthood. How we know this is that is Paul refers to a, a location like this. So Philippians chapter 1, this is what he says on, at chapter, chapter 1, verse 12. Now, I want you to know, brethren, so, so this is something important that he wants to update Philippians on. I want you to know, brethren, that my circumstances have turned out for the greater progress of the gospel. He's in prison. Okay. So that my imprisonment in the cause of Christ has become well known throughout the whole 
Praetorian Guard and to everyone else. If you don't know what Praetorian is, it's the Imperial Guard. They're the guard for Caesar. They're the direct, they're the direct you know, unit under the emperor himself. So Paul is in Rome, imprisoned. And while he's imprisoned in Rome, he was able to share the gospel with the entire imperial guard. And most likely, the reason why he mentions this is because some of those imperial guard came to Christ and they became your brother. So when Paul refers to especially the ones in, uh, from the Caesar's household, he probably means these people that he was able to share the gospel with. Why is this important? This, this is important because of a couple of things. If you remember back to the beginning of this series, the city of Philippi is an important city because a lot of Roman citizens live there. Not just any Roman citizens, but veterans of the Roman Empire live in Philippi. So they have a very close relationship with people in Rome. So Rome is really important to them. Caesar is important to them. So the fact that people in Caesar's household are now, were now able to encounter the gospel and some of them have come to Christ to be your brethren is incredibly important for the people in Philippi. So when he tells them, especially the Caesar's household, greet you, he means, look, your faithfulness for the gospel, your work for the gospel, your striving together for the gospel as a body of Christ has not been in vain. Through your work with me, Paul, these people in Caesar's household were able to come to Christ. More souls were, more souls were saved. More numbers have been added to the book of life. And even these new converts now greet you. So take heart. Whatever is going on in your church right now, no, no matter what is going on with all the divisions and the discord and the disagreements within the church, your work as a church is progressing the gospel even to the Caesar's household. And now they greet you. So don't lose heart in greeting each other. Don't lose heart thinking maybe whatever, is, whatever that we're doing, all the greetings and all the caring, all the praying for is in vain. Paul's saying, no, look at these people who are greeting you, all the saints, especially Caesar's household, the new converts, the, new pe the people who are able to listen to the gospel because of your support for Paul in prison. How is, this, how is this all possible? How is it that the supplies that Philippians sent to Paul, the prayers that they had with Paul were so effective? How is it that we are able to achieve unity and harmony within the church? How is it that we are able to greet one another even when we don't like each other? How is it that we are able to receive strength from the one who saves us so that we can do all things? How is it that we are able to do all the things that Paul has claimed that he's able to do and the Philippians are able to do in this letter? And he declares all of this to grace of Christ Jesus. That's why he ends the letter with, may the grace of Christ Jesus be with your spirit. He opens and closes every single one of his letters like this. 
He always says in the beginning of the letter, to you, to whomever, be grace of Christ Jesus. And he ends with, may grace of Christ Jesus be with you. Everything that we do, everything that we talk about, everything that we're called to do, everything that we are told we ought to do is literally not possible if not for grace of Jesus. Because what motivation do you have to love on your enemies? What motivation do you have to pray for people who are 100,000 miles away? I don't know if that's possible. What motivation do you have to pray for the one that you just fought with yesterday? What motivation do you have to greet every saint around the world? What motivation do you have to give up your resources to build the kingdom of God around the world? What motivation would you have to go on mission trips? What motivation would you have to share gospel with the person next to you if not for Jesus Christ and his grace upon us. That's why he says, as he opens the letter, grace to you. Everything that he includes in this letter is grace to you. And now as he leaves, as he closes, as he does outro for this letter, he says, grace be with you. So that as you leave this letter, as you you finish this letter, may grace be with you for now and forevermore. So that you may live in his grace. Be reminded of the undeserving grace that we have received. So that you may be reminded of the undeserved love you have received, undeserving greetings and the cares and the prayers that you received, so that you might be able to pray, care, and greet one another. So my brothers and sisters, I don't know if you've ever run into a situation where you look to someone and say, That person does not deserve my attention. Maybe you felt the urge to avoid someone just looking at them. Maybe you had the desire to avoid someone based on your history with them. But because of the grace of Christ Jesus that you received... Because of grace of Christ Jesus that is with you. Would you ask God to give you the heart to reach out to them and greet them? Let's pray. Heavenly Father. Oh, how hard it is for us to overcome our own emotions, to overcome our own problems, to look beyond ourselves, to greet one another. How difficult it is for us to look over all the conflicts, look over all the discord and the disagreements, so that we may greet those who do not like us. So Lord, would you remind us daily, would you remind us every moment in our lives of your grace, how you have come, died for us, and rose again for us, even while we were your enemies. So Lord, as we finish this letter of Philippians to the Philippians, if not anything, would you help us to remember your grace? So that in everything that we do, 
we may reflect what you have done for us. So that as Paul says, greet every saint. Lord, would you help us to greet our brothers in Christ with the heart that you have for us. Lord, we lift up our desires up to you. We lift up all our problems up to you. So that beyond all of that, we may be able to greet one another and show the world that we are your sons and daughters. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.